Welcome back to Catalan guys. In today's video, we're talking about the biggest problem in this country for kids football. Now in the UK, we've always had a bias towards size when it comes to our football players. And if you look at the professional academies and shadow squads around the country, it's very rare to find players that are below the average height for their age. Now, part of this is due to the difficulty of playing football at the highest level for their age groups. And another part of it is due to smaller players struggling to thrive in those environments. And today we're gonna to talk about and discuss some of the reasons why we think that things have to change. Now, the way that our football system works in this country is it allows players who are confident and capable and willing to play up an age group in games and tournaments to do so. So a 10 year old with enough technical ability and size can play as an under 10 or an under 11. The merits and the advantages of that can be disputed, but what's not disputable is that the FA does allow players to play above and beyond their age group. So while that allowance is made for players who are above the average height for their age group, maybe it's their technical ability or perhaps both, but very few allowances are ever made for the opposite attributes. What if a player is small for his age? What if a player struggles from a technical level or from a confidence level and playing at his own age group? For instance, a 10 year old who is classed as an under 10 in her age group by her date of birth would not be allowed to play in an under nine's -nice team because the rules don't allow it. Now bear in mind that a 10 year old who is only just old enough to play under 10s and could be just a week away from playing under nines could be extremely small for their age too. Now imagine that little girl and take into consideration that the same player could be playing against players who are 10 year old and have been 10 year old for nearly a year and are way above average for height and weight. So let's look at this in more detail with some actual facts based on the ages, the averages of players around that age group to really give us an idea of what we're looking at and talking about here. So the average height of a 10 year old in the UK is 138 centimetres and the average height of an 11 year old is 144 centimetres. That means that a 10 year old who is small and lightweight with a height of 133 centimetres, which is the nine year old average, would be expected to play against, compete, tackle and chase players who are 11 centimetres taller and weigh 10 kilograms more. We've seen players lose confidence, lose motivation, and a love of the beautiful game that we all enjoy because of a lack of success. But by competing with players who have an advantage that they cannot match, small players are forced to struggle, play within their limits, and get on with it, sometimes against impossible odds. So what's the solution? How do you fix something like this? How do you work with players and with parents and with coaches rather than playing against them? Now, the English FA have a special dispensation rule which can be applied to children who are within their bottom few percent for their height of their age group. This requires doctors' medical reports, a long and arduous process to go through, and absolutely no guarantees that the dispensation rule will be made. And because there's no black and white rule, it can be very difficult for anybody to actually get that dispensation when it really would benefit the child. And while that process takes place, the child in question is either sat at home, not playing the game that they love because of their struggles, or trying to roll their sleeves up and play against very, very steep odds that they probably won't overcome. Now, in exceptional circumstances, you may be granted the opportunity to play down an age group because of your height. But this happens very few times, and it's rare to see. But surely it should be so much simpler than that because bigger isn't always better. Let's look at some of the things that smaller players will offer and that might help them develop by playing against players that are more appropriate to their size rather than just their age. Smaller players have a lower center of gravity and can often change direction quickly and can have exceptionally quick feet compared to taller players. All these traits make for some of the best and most exciting players to watch. However, these traits and skills can be unlikely to flourish if a player who is playing with them is playing within their limits, is struggling to make up ground, cannot outrun or outmuscle their bigger opponents. You tend to find that their best traits then disappear. To put this into context, players under 11 years old in this country do not play competitive matches and score lines aren't recorded. Now the FA are clear that they want to emphasize the football at a younger age group should be about developing and fun, not about results. Sounds like a great idea, right? However, in these friendly games that are all about fun, development and creativity, a 10 year old who is the size of an average nine year old, unconfident and doesn't enjoy playing at his own age group, is absolutely not allowed to play against kids his own size because he was born four weeks before they were. Does that sound right? So as a country, we need to look at our system. The categorization of kids should be about more than just the day that they were born. It should include their height, their weight, 
we should look at other sports like martial arts that would never allow a child who is massively outweighed, is massively outsized, to then fight against an opponent that has got the massively beat. Weight, height, ability, confidence, and premature birth are all completely ignored when it comes to categorizing children into the appropriate game format and peer group. Some academy systems are addressing this now and allowing players to play with younger players to help them flourish, but grassroots is still years behind. And to give you some examples of players who were below average height when growing up as young footballers but grew up in different countries playing in different systems, David Silva, N'Golo Kante, Diego Maradona, Xavi Hernandez, Sergio Aguero, Andres Iniesta, we all know Lionel Messi. So you have to question, would these players have thrived? Would they have even survived our academy system playing in this country? And unfortunately, the answer is probably not. Luckily, these players grew up and flourished in systems that were much more flexible than ours. So we do need to do something about this. And it's not something that's going to happen overnight and it will take time. But we genuinely believe that for every kid to get the best success, develop at their own speed, then why can't they play slightly down a year group? Why can't they play against kids that give them a fair fight and most importantly help them build confidence because we all know what confidence does in this sport. We see it from the grassroots level to the elite level that when a player is full of confidence, they are a completely different player. The best way to give them confidence is give them an opportunity for success. Let's stop putting featherweights in the ring with heavyweights, which is what's happening every single Sunday across the country for boys and girls that are outmuscled and outmatched. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you soon.